Well, hi there. You're here with Barry. And um, gosh, um, Leanne came up with what I think is a great idea. And while you, all you ever do is you seem to hear so often so much more negativity than anything that's good. And we're going to do a set of YouTubes and uh, actually probably make it a feature of our Something Feels Wrong and DR Escapes uh, sites. I don't know. We don't even know what we're going to call it yet. It might be something like the wise old gringo or it might be whatever the gringo knows. But what I want to address is um, while I know why it's done, I'm quite, uh, quite skillful on the Internet. I want to make a, a few points here that um, should be really just nothing more than common sense. I'm not looking for any yays or any nays or any personal comments regarding uh, a person's own personal experience in any of the above. But I do want to address from someone who's getting near four decades in various countries, uh, might even call it the wise old gringo, we don't know, that just came to mind. But anyway, uh, we thought it'd be a great idea if we put together videos about the good, the bad, and the ugly like we always do. We don't sugarcoat it, but more importantly, we don't face one side or the other because everything is really somebody's personal experience. Um, Einstein once said genius has its limitations, but stupidity is limitless. And from my own personal uh, experiences in life, I tend to agree with that. I find uh, people that hang around certain groups or frequent certain areas are looking for trouble and trouble doesn't have much trouble finding them. However, we're going to do a series of videos and our point is not to say anybody's right, anybody's wrong. Our point is, is to maybe spread a little bit of experience that almost four decades does. Uh, actually, I'll be celebrating uh, uh, my birthday coming up this week and it's not a good time for me because the numbers are creeping up, but I still feel pretty good and healthy and still feel I got a lot to offer people in terms of just good natural experience about various countries that I've lived in. And we're going to concentrate primarily, we're going to get into things like perhaps better ways of buying a car, about should you employ people or should you sublease them? So the pitfalls and perils of both sides of that argument. Uh, how to avoid taking, being taken advantage of. Uh, simple things like I, I see and I watch so many of these YouTubes, not just about this country, but about all countries and everybody seems to really pound on the doom and gloom and every little thing is a ripoff in one country where it's not in another. I'll give you just a prime example of where I'm going with this. Let's say you were to change money at an airport in any country in the world. I don't care if it's Miami. I don't care if it's New Guinea. You're always going to pay a premium. Anytime you change currency into the local currency with a vendor on the road, that person has every right to make a little bit on the exchange. That's how they make their living. Why would you assume he's sitting there baking in the sun just to give you the, the, the full amount without him making a, a, a peso or a drachma, whatever country you're in, so he's there to sit there and give you the exact... It's up to you to learn where the normal or the premium exchange is. And why is it that that's perfectly fine in Miami International Airport, but if you come to Colombia or Dominican Republic, all of a sudden it's a scam. You see, the words change, and, and I'm not a big fan of that, because, uh, you know, look, crime and stupidity are pretty closely related, and my gosh, uh, any country you want to name me, name me, uh, better yet, let's make this short, name me a country that corruption doesn't exist. What you want to look for is find a country that you can afford to live in with the corruption, because you're not going to eliminate corruption. Okay, so we're going to do, like I say, this series of videos, and we really hope a lot of good, open-minded people get some benefit from it. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, we'll be touching some really interesting subjects. We'll be touching immigration, possibly how to buy a car better, how to avoid the pitfalls in terms of investment, be it in real estate, be it in purchasing a car, be it in any kind of investment. What to do and what not to do when you're frequenting locals. 
Okay, um, really classic 101 mistake is, uh, and rightfully so, I understand it, people who start to grasp the language. I see it time and time again with our visitors. And by the way, we've toured with over 800 tours now, so we've got a little bit of experience here. And uh, it's, it's well over 3,000 people, but about 800 tours. And I understand why people do it, but when they start learning the local language, whatever that language may be, their first impression is to go out and try to speak the language. And that's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's a good thing if you're socializing with people you know. If you're trying to negotiate, it's a bad thing. And I'll tell you why. Because if you come off like the uh, kind of dumb foreigner and uh, no, no, no hablas espanol, uh, uh, I'm sorry, no espanol, okay, you're going to find 60 to 80 percent of the time they're going to munch around in their words amongst themselves. Not knowing that you know some of what they're saying or all of what they're saying, they're going to spill the beans right in front of you. Okay, they're going to say, that's the tonto americano. You know, everybody's an American. You can come from Europe. You can come from Australia. But according to locals, and this is in every country, you're an American, okay, americano. And everybody that's an American, by the way, happens to live in Nueva York, okay? Everybody lives in New York. It's just one big, giant state that covers the nation, New York. Okay, that's normal. Get used to it. Deal with it. But if your first inkling is from the heart to show them that you're making an effort to speak their language, okay, la boca es cerrado, the boca, the mouth shuts, okay, they shut the mouth. If you pretend that you are the innocent person looking just to get some help and some advice, you're going to find out many times you're going to overhear like a tonto americano, ese yo soy 20% mass, and you're going to find he's a dumb American or a dumb foreigner. I'm going to hit him for 20. This is giving you information to where you know where you start to bid at. Okay? So you keep it quiet. In other words, I'm going to give you guys what I hope is a beneficial series of videos that is going to teach you one of the most important laws I've learned in 38 years. Let them use you for pesos. Learn how to use them for dollars. You're never going to lose in that argument. So we're going to start off, and this is Leanne's idea, my wife's idea. We're going to start off today, uh, uh, the old Honda here. It's uh, time for another set of skins on the Honda because uh, we're rounding up over 220,000 miles in this country, and uh, we're still learning every day. But I go through a set of tires about every 15 months, which is normal. I do a hell of a lot of driving. And uh, we're going to head out to Nagua, which is about 35, 40 minutes away. Uh, Nagua is an industrial town. Uh, it's a commerce town, uh, very minimal in tourism. And that's another thing you're going to find. Don't complain about prices in tourist towns versus more of a local based town. OK, uh, I'll give you a great example. Um, the most expensive grass fed filet mignon, it'll be about a pound, a pound and an eighth. Free ranging grass fed filet mignon at our best restaurant here. And we've had people from all over the world, from Asia, where they know beef, Western Canada, where I'm from, even Texas. Okay, and they're saying it's one of the best steaks they've ever tasted in their in their lives. And it's with all the trimmings, everything, sides, vegetables, you name it, it's $13. That's the most expensive one we've got. Okay, uh, you can't find a bad restaurant in these small towns because they're not around if they're not. But that gives you an idea. Now, when I go and pick up clients, sometimes we'll stop for lunch, be it uh, for the most part Sosua. Not saying anything good or bad about Sosua. It's just very different than where we live. But we'll be picking them up and, and I'll go to uh, one of my favorite restaurants. I'll leave the name out of it because I don't want to make it appear negative. They're not overcharging, but I'll get a sandwich, a nice sandwich or a meal there. And a meal there, a simple lunch is running 15 bucks. Okay, around our region, when you start to know local restaurants, you can get an excellent lunch here for under three dollars. And I mean meat, chicken, or fish, vegetables, the full plate. You know, plato de dia, the plate of the day. So again, understand that too. The more expats that are in your area, generally that inflates prices. It's not that anybody's ripping you off. If that's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. 
So Leanne gave us a good idea. She said, hey, why not start it out with you going into Nagua? You're getting tires anyway. Shop around. Let's see what you come up with and we'll put it up. And then what I'm going to do after is I'm going to uh, just pull up some uh, tire warehouses out of Florida because a lot of people think it's better shipping things in. Maybe they're right. Let's find out. And uh, this is only my experience. So I'm not saying anybody's right, anybody's wrong. Let's get off that you're with me or against me because we're not helping each other doing that. If we're all on the same team, everybody's experience is only their personal experience and same with me. Okay, I've headed up this chapter, don't let this happen to you in the book of life more than you guys will ever imagine. So if somebody takes you for 10 pesos, hey, chill. If someone takes you out for $10, chill. Because if you want to talk about corruption and being ripped off, just look at your last tax bill and look at what you're paying for property tax. And I rest my case. Don't need to go any further, okay? So come on with us. We're going to go out into Nagua. I'm going to get these tires done, this and that. I'll take a few pictures. And uh, what I'll do is I'll take a picture of the final bill. We'll convert it into, I guess, U.S. dollars would be the easiest. And let's see how old Barry made out, okay? So I'm going to grab my phone here, and we'll catch you in Nagua. I'll take a few pictures. And uh, I really think um, all you good folks are going to get a lot of good benefit out of this, okay? And we'll talk to you guys soon.